So, you know, what happens to the brain after a concussion? Well, it's a little hard to answer because, as you know, people don't die from a concussion. So we don't have necessarily um, brain tissue to analyze. But there are many papers that speculate that there's a, you know, a mismatch between the oxygen or the fuel supply to the brain after it is injured and that you can have everything from cell death of the neurons, the brain cells, to just malfunction of the brain cells. Uh, the connections between the brain cells don't work as well. This is our, our working hypothesis. That's why it seems transient, it appears reversible, and then it may explain why some people get better faster than others, and others have long-term consequences. So we think we know what's happening, but again, because people don't, thank God, don't expire right away from this, we're just guessing. One of the biggest problems we deal with is we don't have a quick test to talk about concussion. So a concussion just means simply the violent shaking of the brain. And it would be nice to get a blood test that says, oh, you've had a concussion, you haven't. Right now, we make the diagnosis of concussion based on the symptoms. So if we witness somebody's head hitting another head, hitting the ground, hitting an object, as we see in sports or in the military, or a blast, a, a wave comes and hits your head, we call that a concussion. The symptoms that people get from this are headaches, cognitive problems, um, uh, malaise, a whole host of symptoms. So there is no good blood test. Similarly, there is no blood test for chronic traumatic encephalopathy. The thought is that there is an increase in something called beta tau protein or beta tauopathy in these brains. Having said that, this is an evolving, rapidly evolving field. And just last, in the last few months, there was an article out which showed that beta tau is also found in normal brains. So now it's very confusing. Is this different in traumatic brains versus the controlled normal brains? So we don't know the answer. So I think, I think we're going to hear a lot more interesting results, as you know, Boston University received a grant from the NFL of about a million dollars to study this subject. And so they're doing autopsies on uh, uh, athletes. And there's a brain bank there where athletes can donate their brains or they can donate them to the NFL and they will have uh, other uh, neuropathologists who look at autopsy brains to determine what the changes are. So a lot more questions than there are answers. We don't have a good blood test. We don't even have a, a good test other than a, a, a standard neurologic exam. And interesting that you asked because the NFL just came out this year. Our team of doctors um, that consults for the NFL, team of academicians, uh, basically came up with an NFL sidelines exam to standardize the exams that are performed on the players before the season starts and then once they're concussed so that we can make a good determination on the sidelines, did this player have a concussion and he has to be removed from the game or did he not have a concussion and he can go back to play?